Hello, my friends. I'm Rich Larson, and I'm the IRC Tire Guy. Today, we are on to episode two of 10 of our progression series featuring Mark Aikida and myself. It's going to be a lot of fun today. We're moving on to clutch control. Again, you guys can check out episode one right here. I want you following along every single week. You can work on it for a week and move on to the next episode as if you were taking a private lesson from me. So we are moving on to power delivery, right? So I talked about the three tenants last time. We've got balance, body position, and power delivery or throttle and clutch control. So most of the time, uh, I would say 99% of riders are nowhere near adequate with their ability to control the machine with throttle and clutch. So I have some great drills that are awesome for dialing in that ability to control that throttle and clutch and get you through those technical situations. So what we are gonna do is head over to a little hillside and get started on our clutch control drills. We are on the side of a hill. We've got clutch control drills. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have seen these videos. Um, this is one of the most important drills. This is so useful in not only hard enduro situations, any situation. When you get into a, a, into a section or something technical that's uphill, you want the ability to control your machine. Well, your ability to control your machine is dictated by your clutch. We have two forms of control here. We have throttle, we have clutch. Now, a lot of guys say, man, that Graham Jarvis has great throttle control, which he does, but it's more than anything. Yes, it is probably 75% clutch control. Understanding how to use dispersing power. So I'm gonna get just a quick little breakdown of what we're talking about here. Throttle is very direct power. We are directly putting throttle from the piston to the rear tire, right? Power, explosion, straight to the rear tire. It's very inconsistent, okay? Now, we can use that inconsistency, if, if your throttle's inconsistent, somewhat of a light switch, we have the clutch to disperse that power through, of course, the weight of its, the, the clutch, the weight of the spinning piston, the weight of the, the actual transmission itself, the flywheel, we have that ability to smooth out that power with the clutch. So I always say, if your throttle is a light switch, your clutch is the dimmer, that's how we set the mood, right? So we got, we got, our, we got our popcorn. Me and Mark, we're snuggled up. <laughs> We've got the light switch. We got the dimmer. Just like your suspension, I always say, your suspension has multiple forms of control, right? We have rebound, compression, spring rate, valving, even oil viscosity, right? That ability to control your bike, to control how you set up your suspension. We've got a lot of different settings, right? We want the most amount of settings possible. Well, it's the same with our power delivery. We wanna be able to use our throttle and our clutch at the same time. So this is a great exercise for learning how to do that. What we're going to do is roll back and forth on a hill. Very simple. We're gonna move up and we're gonna move down. Okay, now the goal here is, I'll, I'll kind of give you the example. The goal is smooth movement, okay? We want to be able to go all the way to the top and all the way back down without repeatedly stopping. We slowly roll that bike forward. You can hear very, very low throttle lugging that machine. Now, if you notice there, it's all one movement, right, Mark? I'm not stopping halfway. I'm not like going here, stopping, going here, stopping, and then on the way back. We're not doing that. We want to be smooth the whole way through. What I want you to do is make sure you're nice and centered, rolling back and forth, smooth throttle. We, won't, we don't want a lot of power. We want to be very smooth with the throttle and actuating movement with our clutch. So when I say actuate movement, our clutch is our control. We're really just holding a steady throttle the whole time and we're moving with our clutch in and out, okay? Give it a shot and we'll see where we're at. Good job. There we go. So if you stall it one time, that means we need to improve. What I'm gonna say is slow your movement down a little bit. If you notice here, you're kind of letting the clutch out, and this is a common thing that I see. You let the clutch out and then you kind of let it out all the way. The speed in which you moved up. So then you get to the top and you're like, I gotta start rolling back down backwards. You pull it all the way in. 
pull it all the way in, the speed backwards is quite fast. That's where you stall the machine, okay? So we wanna slow it down a little bit. Slow down everything. Very steady throttle, slow movement. Now I'm gonna show you a little example here. I'm holding a steady throttle and I'm just slipping about halfway out. You can hear those RPMs move up when I pull in and back down when I'm lugging. Okay, now notice here, I've got a little bit of movement, but it's not moving. So I add a little bit of throttle and I slip a little more until the movement starts. Okay, so now I'm holding everything in one place. I'm at a point where I need a little more, I add a little more and I slip a little more. Very nice, here we go. Now I'm pulling clutch in, slowing down my movement. We're still slipping. Now I kind of bring it in a little more. Now I'm moving down, but I'm still slipping. Still. I'm never going all the way in, all the way out. I'm always slipping. Much better. That was much better. Now again, when you want to start slowing down, just slowly bring that clutch in. I'm not okay. good at that. <laughs> I am not good at that. Yeah, slowly oh. bring that clutch in. That's okay. Slowly bring that clutch in to slow the movement. But we're stolding everything very steady, okay? Go ahead. See that? So we let off there, and now we grab our front brake. Now notice. Beautiful. This is great. Roll back down. Couple things, okay? Soon as Mark got to the top, there's a habit that every rider has. When you start rolling backwards, because it's scary, everybody lets off, they pull the clutch in for some reason. It's really, which really doesn't make any sense. Because in fact, you should probably either add a little bit of throttle and slip the clutch or let go of the clutch, right? Because if it's in gear, it'll just stop, okay? Now, as soon as everyone does that, they pull the clutch in, they let the throttle off, they grab their front brake. Now, this isn't a very steep hill, but it didn't do much for you, did you? No. Now, if we were up on that side hill, you'd be in big trouble, wouldn't you, right? That is a bad habit. So, if you guys are feeling yourself grabbing for that front brake, we got problems. We got bad habits. We gotta break those ha bad habits, okay? So, if you're feeling yourself grab for that front brake, avoid that. Let's try and make that a, a, a thing that we're noticing, we're aware of, and then we're trying to correct, right? So, so no front brake. Oh. No front brakes, son. So nice and smooth. Um, if you notice there, as soon as you got to the top, you let off. Yeah. I want you to hold it steady and just actuate your movement here. So if you want to stop okay. movement, bring the clutch in slightly. Okay. We're holding this steady. Okay. If you want to stop your movement, bring the clutch in slightly. Okay. If you want to continue your movement, you slip the clutch. And then as you're moving backwards, you know, you bring the clutch in slightly, it's going to stop. You bring it in a little more, it's going to start creeping back. But if it starts going too fast, what can we do? We just let it out that much. This is a very fine, fine control. Most people look at this and they think it's very, very easy, but truthfully, oh, no, it's not. everybody stalls. Oh, no, it's everybody not. stalls, okay? <laughs> so this is perfect for the average rider. You are the average rider. This is how we get better. There we go. Creep it back. Steady throttle. Oh boy, now we're talking. That was, oh, okay. that okay. was a big improvement. Okay. So, uh -huh. Can I do more? Big improvement. Keep going. I see what you're saying. Yes, sir. Good save. Focus on your throttle. we're talking. There's one. Oh boy. That is so much more controlled. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. That was absolutely beautiful so much more control so much so much improvement there in just five seconds right we went i mean i, I just gave you a couple little tips and now you're just applying those that's huge so 
Something I wanna say is most people ask when they see this drill, is this going to wear out my clutch? <laughs> okay, it's another question. Yes. That I'm just like, oh. Yes, yes, yes. You guys, you guys. <laughs> okay, this isn't the old days, okay? Bikes are made for this, okay? Now, of course, does it wear your clutch? I guess, I mean, as much as riding a dirt bike wears your clutch, but what, are, what is our goal here? Our goal is to progress. Our goal is to learn how to control our machine. You don't have control of your bike without clutch control, okay? So get wearing those clutches, okay? <laughs> that being said, on my last beta, which this is an improved clutch, but on my last beta, I put 500 hours on the original clutch. It's a lot more abuse than this is given, right? 500 hours on the original clutch. I did not replace the plates until I sold the machine, okay? So this is a new and improved clutch. I will burn this thing all day long, ride it and grind it and whatever. It ain't gonna wear, it's fine. KTM clutches are bulletproof. Beta clutches seem to be bulletproof. I haven't had a lot of experience on Yamahas, but I'm assuming that they're fine, okay? So nowadays, modern clutches are very strong. They're very, very durable. I wouldn't worry so much about it. And again, what is our goal? Our goal is progression. You will not progress without clutch control, okay? So, I'm sure somebody will have something to say about that. So, get after it. <laughs> Good control, much better, Mark. Good job. Steady throttle. I would give it a, just, a, just a tad more, okay? If we're stalling, let's add just a little extra throttle to it, okay? Okay. What I like to do is let me get on, and I want you to listen. Listen to exactly what the bike sounds like with me. Smooth throttle. I want you to kind of copy that sound. Okay. Already. I'm quite a bit higher in RPM, right? Smooth. Doesn't matter the machine I'm on. It's all the same. All the same. You can hear there, Mark. All my movement is being actuated by that throttle and with that clutch. Smooth throttle. Lugging. I want you to focus on a little extra so we can avoid stalling and then work that throttle down, down, down. Okay, good job. That sound is already better. I like the sound. That sounds beautiful. Nice and smooth. Way better. Control. Good job, Mark. How did that feel? Extremely difficult. Yeah. Um, Isn't that crazy? Especially the clutch. Throttle wise, I recognize, and I, I think I'm not quick enough to adjust. But I know I have issues. Yeah. So. Clutch side. My goodness, it's 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 hard. Okay. So, what I always say is, yes, you're absolutely right. It's very hard, right? The friction zone is very small. Now, the more throttle you give it, and I know I kind of told you you have to give it a little more because we want to avoid for stalling. The more throttle you give it, the tighter that friction zone yes. becomes, right? Because yes. Right, uh, it's more extreme on each side. So a big thing that I always say here is, first off, I want you to understand that my clutch finger, my middle finger, has pulled in the clutch literally a billion times. I mean, I can't even imagine. A double blip is like really three clutch pulls. So, and I've done, you know, thousands of those in a day. So I, I don't know, I've been doing this for a long time. I can feel that friction zone. So I have literal dexterity in my clutch finger. 
And the truth is, is this is kind of like riding with your non-dominant hand. If you don't have that dexterity, in fact, if I switch to my pointer finger, because I just, you know, I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just saying, if I switch to my pointer finger, I can't do it because I don't have that dexterity, okay? So I have a lot of dexterity in my finger. It takes time and it takes practice to learn this stuff. This is very technical and it's a lot harder than a lot of people think. I have one more thing I want to add to the list. We're going to roll up, hold that bike in one position keeping it there using a slip of our clutch. We're gonna add our rear foot, or sorry, our foot to the rear brake, pull the clutch in, hold the bike in one position, and switch back and forth from rear brake to clutch slip, okay? So first I'm gonna give you an example, don't worry. You have to adjust and adapt for our disadvantages. I always say, instead of saying, I can't do something because of, how about we learn how to do something in spite of? Your boy's a motivational speaker. <laughs> the example is going to be rolling up the hill, holding in one place, switching back and forth between rear brake and clutch. And I want you to see kind of the actuation of rear brake and clutch together. So start that bike up, low power. We move it forward. Now listen, we come to a stop. I just pulled in the clutch a little bit, but we're still slipping. We're holding that bike in one position. We add the rear brake, clutch is in. Bike is idling, we continue to slip, and we release the rear brake. Now, the goal here is to be able to switch back and forth that quickly. Now, notice I'm not moving, am I? I find that spot every single time with that friction zone, right? I know how to put that bike right in that friction zone and hold it in one position. Repetitions is how I got to that point, right? I feel that friction zone and that's what the goal is. This is a great way to understand that friction zone, okay? So our goal here is, again, overlapping each thing. Notice I have the rear brake on, I slip the clutch, I still haven't released the rear brake. Then I release, then I add, I haven't pulled in the clutch, now I've pulled in the clutch. If I overlap them, that holds the bike in one position. This is super useful for situations where you stall it up on a big side hill, you stall it in a technical spot. You wanna have the ability to throw your foot on that rear brake, start the bike, slip the bike, then continue forward, right? I see a lot of riders, they say they use their rear brake to start the machine, they release the rear brake and the bike starts rolling back and then they have to go, just like what happened right there, right? So our understanding of slip, release, then movement, right? That's what we're looking for, okay? So, mark your mark, set yourself up. Oh, not bad. Not bad at all. So right there, we're seeing, good job, Mark. Just that little bit of control, you can see he's, he just hasn't quite have that ability to be completely comfortable with controlling his machine. Controlling the machine doesn't just mean movement. It also means the ability to stop when you want it to. Notice front brake didn't do much there. So we have the bad habit of the front brake. See that, we didn't overlap the two. There's all these little things that you're gonna notice as you're trying to learn these skills. So we see front brake repeatedly. We have the habit of that. We're trying to do 10 things at once. This takes coordination, right? Oh. This is one of those like, right? One of these situations, rub your belly, pat your head, right? That's kind of a, a whole thing. I mean, this, this takes that ability to do some different things with your fingers, your limbs, your everything. That's why I made this drill up is I wanted people to understand that Controlling your bike doesn't just mean movement. It means complete control. That means stopping, that means going, that means just dragging, slipping, moving, little bits. All, a complete understanding of control means stop and go, right? So you're doing good, but we see, we have a lot of holes in our game and this is common. Every rider has these holes. So we work them. We roll back and forth repeatedly. We stop, we hold that bike in one position. You have work to do on this, right? 
Yes. And I'm sure most of you also have work to do. It may seem easy from afar, but I'll tell you what, go give it a shot. Trust me, do it. Next week's episode is gonna be a solid little addition to that. And it's a little bit of clutch control. It's a little bit of body position. Uh, basically what we're gonna work on is getting on and off the bike. This is one of those things that again, most guys look at, they're like, I can do that, but they've never tried it. And uh, it's actually quite challenging and it's extremely useful in all kinds of situations. Understanding how to move on those pegs and kind of dance around can save you in a lot of situations. There's been a lot of times where I jump off that bike and it saved me big time. Or being able to get on the bike on a side hill, there's a lot of different situations where it's helpful. So we're gonna work on that next week. Make sure you guys are following along. We've done two episodes so far. I hope you guys are enjoying it. We've got, what, eight more to go. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Tune in next week, and uh, yeah, Mark, great job. And uh, yeah, keep shredding, huh? <laughs>